Yeah, so it's BCAAs. They're they're kind of the supplement that uh, kind of refuses to die. Um, it, they've been around forever, and they taste terrible. Uh, they all they all just they're the most bitter amino acids that you can possibly take. Uh, but they've got quite a, a little cult following, um, and it's interesting because out of the BCAAs, it's really leucine that most people are interested in the effects of the isoleucine and the valine, the other two branching amino acids, they don't do that much as far as what we, what, you know, as far as uh, the, the benefits that we're looking for from them. Um, but the BCAAs, as, as Tom was mentioning, he, he supplements with this, these, this leucine during his uh, smaller protein meals. Um, which if I can find a study, there's, there's something about that. Um, but I also want to say that your muscles aren't made just out of BCAAs, right? You need a diversity of amino acids. And so while leucine is the trigger, you need all of the amino acids in the end. And so, you know, when, when Tom's supplementing with leucine, he's not doing it on a, on a zero protein diet. He's doing it with protein just maybe not enough to maximize that signaling right. and i think that's kind of the critical difference here a lot of people take bcaas i think as as uh you know just by themselves with the idea that they're going to get a similar benefit out of it as out of protein but that is absolutely not the case the best you can do if you just have free form bcaas or just take free form leucine is the prevention of muscle protein breakdown, which isn't bad, certainly, you know, depending on your goals, that it's better to prevent muscle protein breakdown than to, you know, accept it and have some muscle protein loss. But if you're an athlete and you're trying to recover optimally, then BCAAs aren't going to cut it. You need protein. You need whole protein. You need all of the amino acids, all of the essential amino acids, not just the branch chain ones exactly and i think what what is what is the worry so there's two things um, uh, people who take bcaas uh, if they know a little bit about it take it because they are trying to stop uh, muscle protein protein breakdown during training right mm -hmm. really from what i look at is just not a concern um right and it's second, better solved through other means yeah, right. So uh, the second thing is that if they're consuming BCAAs immediately after training in an effort to now stimulate muscle protein synthesis, they are, in do they are indeed doing that. But as Brian's pointed out, you're not providing anything else. So the problem comes in is that if you are using BCAAs and assuming that this is a protein meal, you are fooled. <laughs> and you're probably spending too much money on a supplement that really is uh, in the uk we have a beer or a lager rather called stella which has fantastic marketing but it's a terrible beer sorry lager <laughs> uh it's the same thing you you really look here if you want a a protein source that is easy for you to carry around and for you to drink and funny enough, tastes better, then you want to use whey protein, right? The reason people drink BCAAs is either because they think it's doing something that a whole protein source isn't doing, and that's not correct, or they think it's convenient for them to take. Mm -hmm. Whey protein is just as convenient to take. Right. Um, so Yeah, I think, uh, think you've nailed that on the head. There's nothing that BCAAs can do for you that a normal protein supplement or just a whole protein cannot do better, tastier, and for cheaper. There we go. That's that's the that's the anti-marketing spiel. And just to make to, to be clear here, whey protein has all the BCAAs. It does, BCAAs. as do any of the any of the high quality sources. Um, whether it's whey, casein, soy, uh, brown rice protein, these uh, pea protein, these all have ideal amounts of the BCAAs. Right, exactly. So, yeah. Doesn't and matter if you're vegan or vegetarian, there are sources that are way better for that.
Yeah, exactly. We've got peat proteins, we've got rice proteins. Uh, the other thing to, 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 uh, for those who are wondering, uh, if you're trying to stop muscle protein breakdown, you can eat as some carbohydrate. Because the right. muscle protein breakdown immediately stops in the presence of insulin. So insulin is a hormone that gets released when you, that senses, uh, when your pancreas senses blood glucose. So even the mm -hmm. smallest snack is going to stop muscle protein breakdown. So right. When you think of the physiology of muscle protein breakdown, why it happens, um, and maybe you do wonder why it happens, it happens because your body has low blood sugar. It needs to buoy those reserves, and our muscles can be you know, internally broken down into amino acids that can then be converted into glucose. So it only does it because it need, the body needs glucose. And if you provide the body with glucose, carbohydrates, then you prevent it from happening in the first place much more effectively than providing it with BCAAs, which are also going to, you know, provide the same thing, just at a far less uh, effectiveness. Right, right. I think we've, we've killed that one, right? I think so. Um, 